first of all thanks for being here in my youtube channel so in this lesson number one on the topic number system now we are going to learn introduction about it so before solving a question on the topic number system first in this video we can learn some of the important points to remember right so listen here if you take a number system quantitative aptitude topic it is very easy if you are going for any competitive exams, even if you are going for a campus interview, you can able to see minimum of one question from this topic number system and maximum two or three question. And listen here, why I am saying this number system topic is easy because it does not have any formulas to solve. You just have to read the question twice or thrice. You have to understand the question and then you can solve by your own way. Right? Because these are the questions does not require any formula to solve. You just have to understand the question. But understanding a question, right? only if you know some of the important points, what is called as prime number, what is called as divisibility rule, integer, rational numbers, irrational numbers, divisibility rule, so these concepts are important. Before solving all those questions, you have to learn all these concepts. Right? Only if you know the basics of number system, you can able to solve the question. Right? So listen here, in this video, I am just going to teach you uh, the easiest way to learn. I am just going to draw a chart here, so that you can able to learn all the concepts easily by only the chart. So now let me move on to the chart that is based on number system. So friends, listen here, instead of spending more number of time on biating the concepts, better you can understand this chart, what I'm going to teach now. If you understand this chart, then you can save more number of time instead of biating it. It is easy, right? Just see here, first let me take numbers. So numbers is basically separated into two categories. So category number one will be real numbers. Got it? Category number two is imaginary numbers. So numbers are separated into two parts. One is a real number and the second is the imaginary number. So first you need to know what is called as a real number and what is called as imaginary numbers. Just see here, numbers, let, let me take example, 4 plus 3i. Got it? 4 plus 3i. Here, 4 is a normal number which is called as a real number. Imagine, imaginary number is like whenever you can able to see that letter i sometimes you can able to see root of i root of i is minus one so these cases is called as imaginary numbers if a number contains a letter i is called as an imaginary numbers if a normal number is called as a real numbers just see here we are preparing for competitive exams. In the competitive exams, 99% imaginary number questions will not be asked. Only if you are preparing for 9th standard, 10th standard or engineering mathematics, there we can able to see more number of questions on imaginary. But in quantitative aptitude, you don't want to learn this imaginary number concepts. Right? You can concentrate only on the real numbers. Got it. Second. This real number is categorized into two parts. One is irrational numbers. Got it? And the second is the rational numbers. Rational numbers and irrational numbers. So let me understand what is called as a rational number and what is irrational number. Just see here, what is a root of 9? Root of 9 is 3. Yes or no? What is a root of 2? root of 2 will be 1.414213.56 it goes on yes or no when you look at the calculator just check the calculator what is square root of 2 if you find what is square root of 2 we have learned only 1.414 but actually the square root of 2 is 1.414213.56 it goes on it does not have an any end so these cases are called as irrational numbers so got it only if it is a root 9 is 3 right this number has an end but this number does not has an end so if a number that does not has an any end is called as irrational numbers for example root 2 root 3 so these are the numbers yes or no root 2 root 3 these are the numbers that does not have any end after the decimal point so these numbers are called as irrational numbers Right? So these are the small small numbers, for example, a root of 144 is 12. 
yes or no and normal number 3 normal number 4 it has an end so these numbers are called as a rational numbers understood so now we have learned what is called as numbers how it is separated into two types so in the real numbers we have two type one is called as a rational numbers and the second is called as irrational numbers got it next this rational numbers are separated into two parts see one is the integer and second is the fraction it is easy what is called as an integer integer is a normal numbers for example 1 2 3 4 this is called as an integer fraction it is easy right so 1 by 3 3 by 7 you know, fraction numbers just the fraction numbers got it so this rational numbers are separated into two categories one is a normal integer and the second is the fraction numbers if you take this integer this integer is separated into for example positive integer negative integer and a number zero see positive integer is nothing but one comma two comma three comma four till n is called as a positive integer negative integer is minus 1 comma minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 it goes on till minus n it is called as a negative integer 0 is a normal number starting number 0 right so this is a 0 so this integer is separated into three categories positive integer negative integer and then a zeros got it so now let me take this positive integer positive integer is what 1 2 3 4 so this positive integer is categorized into two parts one is the natural numbers second is the whole number everyone knows it what is called as natural numbers and numbers that start from 1 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 until n it is called as natural numbers what is called as whole number a same set of series if we start from 0 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 until n it is called as a whole numbers so friends got it just here integer is separated into sub it's subdivided into three parts positive integer negative integer and a zero you know what is called as integer integer is not a normal number 1 comma 2 comma 4 comma n so we have integer two type positive integer negative integer and a number zero so if you take a positive integer that can be separated into a natural number and a whole number natural number is nothing like a series that start from one is called as natural number if a series that start from zero is called as a whole number got it the last step this natural number is separated into four important there are many parts but I am teaching you only four important parts that are important for competitive exams. So 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 till n. How you can separate this? Even numbers. Yes, even numbers. 2, 4, 6, 8, even numbers. Second will be odd numbers. Third will be prime numbers. Yes or no? What is called as prime number? 3, 5, 7. Those cases are called as prime numbers. And the last is the composite number. You should know what is called as composite number. Composite number is a number which have more than two factors. For example, let me take number 15. How many factors we have? 5 into 3 will be 15, one factor. 3 into 5 will be 15. 1 into 15 will be 15. 15 into 1 will be 15. So if a number which has more than two factor is called as a composite number, that's it right just see how easily we have categorized the number system and now without biating it it is easy to understand the entire concept again i am saying there are more important points other than this but i am teaching only for the exam point of view right for the exam competitive exam point of view i can teach you again one time see first numbers numbers are separated into two category one is a real number and second is the imaginary numbers so real number is the normal numbers imaginary number is the number that contains i letter i is called as imaginary numbers so you don't want to concentrate on more on imaginary numbers because only if you are preparing for school colleges those cases we have to learn this imaginary numbers for the competitive exams quantitative aptitude so this real number is more than enough 
second the real number is categorized into two parts one is a rational number and a irrational number i have told you what is the difference between irrational numbers and a rational numbers if a number that does not have an end it is called as irrational number example square root of 2 if you find what is the value of square root of 2 1.4142356 it goes on right so those cases is called as an irrational numbers so rational number is like normal number root of 9 3 4 5 etc got it so now this rational numbers are separated into two category one is a normal integer and second is the fraction fraction everyone knows 1 by 3 2 by 7 a number as numerator as well as a denominator is called as a fraction got it and the integer so integer are separated into positive integer negative integer and a number zero so positive integer is nothing but 1 comma 2 comma 3 negative integer minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and the last is 0 right number 0 now this positive integer is separated into two categories a series that start from 1 is called as a natural number a series that starts with 0 1 comma 2 comma 3 is called as a whole number at the last this natural number is separated into four important parts even number odd number prime number composite number you know what is called as even number 2 comma 4 comma 6 what is called as odd number 1 comma 3 comma 5 what is called as prime number 3 5 7 right and what is called as composite number a number which has more than two factors <coughs> got it is called as a composite numbers so it is enough friends in this video it is more than enough so in the next video we can learn some of the basics and we can start solving the questions so many students usually sit and buy out all these stuffs don't buy out it now it is easy right so just take down this as a note and you know if you are preparing for competitive exams just take a note of it start learning all the concepts here what is called as irrational numbers just take some examples and see so that number system will be very easy so thank you so much for watching this video so if you really like it, share the video to your friends, those who are preparing for the competitive exams. So in the next lesson, we can learn some more concepts and we can start solving a question. So thank you so much for watching it. Bye.